Once you've gained enough practice, these reductions begin to feel a little repetitive, and it's natural to wonder whether there is a theorem that would capture them all. Indeed there is, and it's traditionally called Rice's theorem, after H.G. Rice's 1953 paper on the subject. This is a very powerful theorem, and it implies that we can't say anything about a computer just based on the language that it recognizes. So far, the pattern has been that we've wanted to show that some language L was undecidable. And this language L was about descriptions of Turing machines whose languages, that is the set of strings that they accept, have a certain property. Two things have to be true about this language. First, as we've said, that the membership can only depend on the language of the machine, not about its particular implementation, like the number of states or the tape alphabet and so forth. Second is that the language can't be trivial, either including or excluding every Turing machine. We'll assume that there's some machine M1 in the language and another machine M2 outside the language. That's the only additional assumption we need. Recall that in all our reductions, we created a machine N that either accepts nothing or else it has some other behavior, depending on the behavior of the input machine M. Similarly, there are two cases for Rice's theorem. Either the empty set is in P, and therefore every machine that doesn't accept anything is in the language L, or else the empty set is not in P. Similarly, there are two cases for Rice's theorem. Either the empty set is in P, and therefore every machine that doesn't accept anything is in the language L, or else the empty set is not in P, and every language that doesn't accept anything is not in L. Let's take a look at the case where the empty set is not in P first. In that case, we reduce from the halting problem. The reduction looks like this. N just runs M with the empty input. And if M halts, then we define N to act just like this machine M1, which is in the language. Thus, N acts like M1 if M halts on the empty string, and it loops otherwise. This is exactly what we want. In the one case, the language of N is the language of M1, and hence N must be in the language. In the other case, the language of N is the empty string, meaning that it's not in L. And a decider for L can thus tell the difference and tell us whether M halted on the empty string or not. Now for the other case, where the empty set is in P. Thus, every machine that doesn't accept any string should be in the language. In this case, we just replace M1 by M2 in the definition of the reduction, so that N behaves like M2 if M halts on the empty string. This is fine, but we need to reduce from the complement of the halting problem, that is, from the set of descriptions of Turing machines that loop on the empty input. Otherwise, we would end up accepting when we wanted to not accept, and vice versa. All in all, then, we have proved the following theorem. We'll let L be a subset of strings representing Turing machines, having two key properties. First, if M1 and M2 recognize the same language, that is, the same set of strings, then their descriptions are both in or out of the language. This just says that the language only depends on the behavior of the machine and not on its implementation. Second, the language can't be trivial. There must be a machine whose description is in the language and a machine whose description is not in the language. If these two properties hold, then the language L is undecidable.